welcome to our series on faith and life. Today we pick up a, a theme that uh, has emerged from the Second Vatican Council, together with that call to holiness that we've spoken about previously. And it, it's the call to mission that comes as a result of our baptism, that call into the mission of Jesus. Now, some of you may find that a little bit strange that you have a mission. Um, and I too can remember growing up and uh, like I was taught by the Sisters of Mercy and by the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, a group of priests. So both of them had what we call missionaries. Uh, I can remember the Sisters of Mercy and uh, one of their sisters coming back and showing us slides of Papua New Guinea and the work they were doing there and the Oblate Fathers, uh, at that time they did their training in South Africa. So they were full of stories of the missions. And so much of growing up was about understanding mission as something that priests or religious did and um, they were in foreign lands. So it was completely off my radar that of the thought that I might be called into mission. Uh, it, it, I wasn't a priest, I wasn't a religious, so I, I didn't see my call as uh, anything like that at all. And what changed it? What, what was the shift that took place? Because it really was an exciting dimension in my life, which I've continued to live uh, for most of my life. Um, I've shared with you previously about having an encounter with Jesus Christ when I was 17 years old. And that turned my life upside down. I, I had a new possibility uh, because I realized one week afterwards as I was reflecting on that experience, I knew I was called to mission. I knew that I couldn't be silent about this great gift, which was Jesus Christ and his good news. So what was the good news? The good news was that Jesus Christ had died and had risen for me, for the forgiveness of my sins, and that I could live a life with God in the present and in life to come uh, after death. And this was a whole new reality. And so uh, from the very beginning of that experience, there was an excitement within me to share good news with others. Why? Because I knew that it had the capacity to change lives. I knew what it had done in my life and in the life of some of my friends who'd experienced that with me. Um, but I saw it in the lives of others as well. And it wasn't just young people, it wasn't just older people, it, it, was, uh, it affected everyone wherever they found themselves. So I saw this great possibility for mission and I felt like I have to tell the whole world about this. And uh, in the last 40 years or more, I've had the opportunity to do that in, in many in many parts of the world. But what I'd like to do today is to offer you three, what I call bite-size uh, moments for mission. Uh, because oftentimes we feel a little inadequate. We don't feel prepared for mission. We don't know what to do or how to go about it. And uh, of course, there's many aspects to mission and we all bring different gifts to it. And as we've spoken about, mission can be about providing a home for people, providing a place of welcome for people. But in uh, today, what I want to share with you are three points. The first of which is the capacity to tell our story. And each person's story is quite unique. Uh, you might remember Mary Magdalene, after 
uh, Jesus was crucified and risen from the dead. She met him in the garden and she thought he was the gardener. And it wasn't till he spoke her name that she knew it was Jesus. You know, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, whom we've shared about before, they, they were there and, and walking away from Jerusalem. It, it was, they were walking into the darkness. So they'd lost their way in the sense of uh, Jesus was disappointing to them. And so when this stranger came and, and joined them, and they walked with him and he explained the scriptures to them and broke bread with them, then they realized it was the Lord. So different people have different moments of encounter with Jesus. Like you've got the great uh, experience of Saul uh, and his conversion. But the reality is many of us experience something <laughs> a little less dramatic than that. Some people experience their journey of faith as something they've grown up with and they can't point to a moment of encounter um, that was something out of the ordinary. That they'll explain to you, well, I grew up and I believed. And uh, this is a wonderful gift of faith and uh, not to be seen as something less than you know, I always uh, encourage, whether it's seminarians or whether it's young people I'm dealing with or older people, don't be ashamed of your story because it's, it's the most wonderful story that you have. You know, and it's not as if you, you have to be uh, uh, somebody who has this very dramatic story of conversion. No, it can be a simple process of growth in our faith, understanding, closeness to Jesus. So let's take for a moment to affirm the different stories that we have. But for each of us, knowing there is always more. You know, it doesn't matter whether you've had this dramatic experience, there is more to it than that. Or if you've had this very quiet experience, there's more. So don't get locked in to the sense of, well, this is my experience and this is as far as it goes. No, no. There's so many opportunities to encounter the Lord. And um, we can do that in such a variety of ways. We can do that in our personal prayer. We can do that in the sacraments. We can do that in a whole range of different ways. God is capable of working with us wherever we are. And in my story, this encounter with God came in a science laboratory at school. So let's not limit the work of God and let's not say it's just a one-off story that we have because we're meant to have an ongoing encounter and personal relationship with the Lord. So there should be many stories that we can actually draw from. So that capacity to tell our story to tell how God has impacted my life. To be able to share with others the reality of a God who can be personal to us. You know, in, in my experience of life, I didn't know you could have a personal relationship with God. I didn't know you could encounter Jesus. I didn't know these things. So they were, they were all new to me. And so when we begin to talk about sharing our story, we, we come from our own life experience. And no one can say to you, oh, well, that's not real, or I don't believe that. It doesn't matter whether people believe it or don't believe it. This is the truth of your journey, of your encounter with the risen Jesus. And it's okay that we have different stories. The fact that we do have different stories enables us to reach a whole different uh, group of people. But then the second dimension of that is not just telling our story, but living our story. 
that story of encounter with Christ. So, what's all that about? You know, more than, uh, what is it, nine, since 1975, Pope Paul VI wrote an apostolic exhortation called Evangelization in the Modern World. And it is one of the foundational things that everybody should read because it, it gives us a really good insight to the sharing of the gospel what it is to do that in our lives. And one of the things he says that was true then and is true now, he said, people will listen more to witnesses than they do to teachers. People will listen more to witnesses than they do to teachers. And if they listen to teachers, it will be because they are first witnesses. And so what he's really saying is anybody can teach about something. But when you teach about something you live, then you have an authority. Then you have a background to draw from. And so it was a, a great emphasis on that personal encounter with the living God, with the risen Jesus that he was talking about and saying, Unless there's something of that in our lives, unless there's an authenticity that we're actually speaking about what we're living, it's not an empty preaching, it's a preaching that comes with conviction, then it won't have any impact. You know, the modern world isn't interested in good ideas. It's interested in authenticity of people who not only have good ideas, but actually live good ideas. And those good ideas are about the gospel. And this was the whole emphasis of Pope John Paul II with the new evangelization. He said, we need, we need new power. We need new, new courage to proclaim the gospel. We need new methods and new expressions. And so there's, there is a sense of newness, but it's the same gospel. And it's a gospel which has to be taken into our lives and lived in our lives. And so this sense of living becomes really important. So the capacity, one, to tell our story, two, the authenticity of living our story of encounter with Christ. Number three, it's like, well, how can we do this in a practical day-to-day -day sort of way? Now, a little while ago, I was in a, a regional city and uh, working with people who uh, lived in fairly remote areas, and they were asking the questions, well, what can we do? We don't have a big platform to, to announce the gospel to people. We, we, our lives are simple. We're working hard. We're in rural areas. We work on farms. What can we do? And many of these were, were women who uh, were faith-filled. You know, they, they had a strong faith and they wanted to do something about it. They, they felt that same sort of conviction that I spoke about. And it struck me that there was something very simple that they could actually do and uh, incorporate that into their day-to-day -day lives. And it's something that Pope Francis has uh, encouraged in the church. And it, the word is accompaniment accompaniment. Now that's a word that we, we may or may not have heard before, um, but it's a word about being with people on the journey. And anyone who has an ongoing and living relationship of faith with the Lord is capable of accompanying somebody else. So you don't have to be an expert 
Although in the life of the church, we do have people who are experts and well-trained, and it comes from that whole spiritual tradition of, of spiritual direction and uh, people of wisdom whom you can go to to gain uh, wisdom for the spiritual life. But in this case, you know, Pope Francis said, we need to initiate everyone into this art of accompaniment. So whether it's lay people, whether it's uh, priests or religious, this is, a, this is a, a way of doing mission which everyone can participate in. And you do it at your own level. So for example, um, you may have somebody over for coffee and, uh, or uh, you may have somebody visiting your house, just um, particularly in rural areas where people go to one another's places and, and uh, take a, a little bit of time for some uh, just good company. And in the course of the conversation, there can be a sharing of faith. Well, the people who are at this conference were saying, this is so exciting for us because this is something that we can incorporate into our daily lives. This is something that, that can work for us. You know, we don't have to be uh, on the street corner. <laughs> Nobody has to be on the street corner uh, because that's, that's one of those images of mission that sometimes puts us off and makes us uh, scared of mission. Um, but it's something that I can do peacefully, that I can invite people into my home, that we can sit around and have a coffee together or we can work together. And uh, sometimes accompaniment is quite intentional. Other times it's something that we do as a result of uh, people's questioning. So there's uh, many occasions where people question faith and say, why would you believe? Why do you go to church on Sunday? What is it that gives you comfort in times of difficulty? How do you survive in these difficult circumstances? There are many questions that open the door to sharing about faith. And these people caught the vision. And it's like, yeah, we don't, we don't always have to be, it's not as if we always have to be talking about God. But we can help people take another step. And so whether you're a young person or an older person, somebody who's quite uh, gifted in their, their life of faith or somebody who is new. I love seeing this with young people. They're, they're unafraid and uh, because it, it's a great gift that they've discovered in their lives. And one of the first things they naturally want to do is to speak to their friends. Now, that's always not a receptive uh, path to go down, you know, there's, uh, Australia is one of the most secular nations in the world. And so this sharing of faith, this capacity to accompany others on a one-to-one -one level is something quite unique. Um, and it's important to give people the confidence that they can actually do this. Now, the other reality to that is that we have less and less people who go to church. You know, we have a, a, a very fast growing number of people who are non-believers. And, you know, it's not difficult to meet people who've never heard of the gospel or they have only scant knowledge of it. But my question is, how are they going to hear about the gospel? How are they going to hear the good news of Jesus Christ? If somebody doesn't tell them, 
because they won't hear it in church. They're not going to church. So where else are they going to hear it? Ultimately, it will only be through personal relationships, through people who actually themselves believe in the gospel and have had an encounter with Christ and who are seeking to live that encounter day by day. And unless that becomes visible, unless somebody says, no, the gospel's real. This is how it's affected my life. And this is now what I'm trying to live. Without that sort of witness, the proclamation of the gospel, certainly in this country, is seriously diminished. And so when we, when we look at Australia, when we look at other parts of the world, we see so dramatically the importance of people in everyday life becoming witnesses, missionaries. We may feel that that title doesn't belong to us, but in fact it does. Our baptism commissions us to be missionaries. And so let me encourage you to take up that call, that gift of bringing life, the life of the gospel to others and sharing with them freely the incredible gift of Jesus Christ who's risen from the dead and who's come to give us life to the full. That's the challenge for today. Let's try and take it up and be faithful. We look forward to welcoming you next week as we continue our journey in faith and life. I'm Bishop Eugene Hurley from the Diocese of Darwin, which takes in the whole of the Northern Territory of Australia. And I'm delighted that Shalom Ministry is now in a position to bring some of that good news to the rest of Australia and indeed to the world. Because we live in a world where the media is so influential, it dictates so much of our learning and our attitudes. And so it's so important that the good news of Jesus Christ has to be made available to all people because it's what we each need as human beings to enliven us, to make us more loving and indeed to bring about peace in the world. So it's this good news that the Shallow Ministry is trying to get across to Australia now. Let me invoke God's blessing upon Shallow Ministry and all who work within it and all who are the subject of its good work. May the blessed Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit descend upon the Shallow Ministry and all who work in it and all their families may keep them at peace forever. Amen. Shalom World, God's own channel.